All right, quiet down, quiet down here. <laughs> you too, Lamont. Okay. Yeah. Let's try it again. Howdy. Howdy. Oh, it's good to see everybody uh, on this kind of a dreary day, typical Oregon weather, right? Yeah. I hope you're all taking your vitamin D3. Yes. Very good. Because you're, if you aren't, you need to be taking it. This helps you get through these dreary days. The best warmer in North Dakota, though. <laughs> um, no. No? It's warmer here. It's a little warmer here. Well, that's what I said. I bet it's warmer here. Oh, I, I thought you said it's warmer there. Yeah, I was going to say, what planet did you come from? <laughs> Oh, let me tell you, that's a boy howdy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this, this is an awesome day, uh, regardless. <laughs> it, it, yeah, and uh, so welcome to everybody, guests, visitors, all the above. Um, good to see you out and about. And... Uh, during these days, it's, uh, it's one of those things where, uh, yes, we take risks, yes, we do this and that. Uh, it's how the Lord leads, isn't it? And uh, so if we are led to come together and worship, that is a good deal. If the Lord leads us to stay at home, that's a good deal. And so whoever is here, it's a good deal. Now, one of the things that you probably have gotten a phone call, <clears throat> and I'm going to talk more about this later on, but just to give you a little heads up, that we are considering, you know, the uh, additional service where it's masks only. And so we're trying to formulate how that might happen and getting all the logistics together, because when you add a service, uh, it's, you know, just somebody has to be the lone arranger, right? It's, it's just, that was funny. Did you get that? The lone arranger? I had to say it slow. Okay, that's... Uh, all right, enough on that. We'll, we'll do some more stuff later on. But we're, we're going to take prayer requests now and also add some praises in there. And uh, so let me share with you what I've got. And if I've uh, missed somebody that really needs to be on there because uh, I don't always get things straight. Well, there's no laughing here, so I guess that's true. So, <laughs> uh, we want to continue to uh, remember Anna Marie and Peter. Um, I don't have a update on Anna Marie, but the last time that I talked with Peter, uh, she was doing a little better. There, it's been kind of up and down for her. And so, uh, Peter's doing a little better. Uh, I think he's starting to get some rest. They, they've got some additional help going on, so um, we're going to keep praying that, hey, uh, she it continues to improve. Uh, for Shirley Middlestat, um, we continue to pray for her as she's um, uh, staying there in, uh, in Anna's house there in uh, it's Albany. Yeah, I keep thinking Corvallis, but I'm wrong. Uh, we want to continue to lift uh, Lee Olufsen. Now, she came through her uh, different tests, and now she's looking uh, towards some additional ones and eventually some surgery. Uh, Debbie Stumpf had uh, her angiogram, and that turned out good. And so she's looking forward now to staying healthy so, so she can have that heart valve repaired. Um, also, Ivan and artist Devin. Uh, Ivan has uh, been up and down. What they're doing right now is they're planning uh, to have Ivan come home. They're building a ramp so they can take a wheelchair into the house. And uh, so we want to pray that artists will have the strength uh, to do these things because it's, uh, it's, quite a, it's quite a challenge. Those of you who have had loved ones that have lived with you that have uh, become more and more infirm, uh, not able to do some of the functions that um, uh, ordinarily are able to, and uh, so it takes an awful lot of care. And so we need to lift artists as well as Ivan up. And then if there are ways in which we can pray somebody into their path that can provide uh, the needed uh, assistance that is so necessary. Uh, we lift up Rhonda Framke. Uh, she has up and down quite a bit lately, just really struggling uh, with that stage four cancer. And there, sometimes there's a little bit of a hope and then other times there isn't. We pray for uh, Steve, uh, her husband, and uh, 
we need to ask that God will place someone into the, their path that will help them uh, to understand the dynamics that are going on there and that, um, that Rhonda, she, she can be affirmed and encouraged uh, that, that God in Christ is there with her and that she can uh, have a, an increase in her faith and that she can trust Jesus uh, to take her through uh, this, this uh, challenge with cancer. Uh, Chuck Spiker, uh, he continues to have these different growths that show up and they have to remove them. Um, he's still taking his uh, therapies with the, uh, I can't remember what they call that. Uh, radiation? It, well, n I don't think it's a radiation right now, it's, it's something else. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, it's kind of like a transfusion that has uh, stuff in it. Chemotherapy. Was that? Chemotherapy? Immunotherapy. Yeah, immunotherapy. Thank you. That, that got my brain going. I do it once a month. Oh, that's right. We want to remember you too, Elizabeth. Uh, you're having a good day today, more or less, huh? Yes. Okay. And we've got, we have Alvin, we've got Mr. Noah over there. He's repairing things. He's repairing things, yes. <laughs> well, hey, you know, there's an up-and-coming uh, uh, mechanical genius. Oh. Enough of that. <laughs> and it's good to see Christine. It's good to it's good to see you guys. It's always good to see you. You're some of my favorite people. Hot doggies. Okay. And then also, uh, here's the here's a praise. Uh, Peyton Elliott has recovered from COVID. Uh, and he did it with some real flying colors, and no one in the family has contracted it. And that's an awesome thing. Um, there was someone else. Billy. Is that is that Peyton? No. Who? Sean? Sean had COVID. Okay, and he's doing okay? He's doing okay, and, and Miranda and Matthew have not contacted him. Oh, awesome. It's an interesting thing. I've, I've been in touch with a friend of mine who's uh, a doctor, and uh, within their congregation, uh, it's mask only. They, everybody wears masks and gloves and everything, and uh, it, people are just running scared out there. And uh, you know, I'm not saying that this isn't that COVID isn't a serious thing. It is. Uh, and on the other hand, you've you've heard me say, and I've written about it, that I refuse to live in fear. Uh, but I'm going to be wise. I'm going to ask God to give me wisdom as we go on. If you don't feel good, you stay home, right? That's what we do with a flu, right? Uh, that's what we do with a bad cold. That's what we're supposed to do. So we're not sharing the love, all right? So, <laughs> so if you're not feeling well, use God's wisdom. Uh, use that warm, gray, messy, gray stuff there in, in that dark place. Uh, in other words, your brain, use it. That's what the Lord gave it to us, and then also for Elizabeth. So let's, any others? Any updates? Back there. Yes, St. Nick. It's getting close to that day for you, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. There you go. Well, that's for you, mechanic. Yeah, Billy's going in for cataract surgery this week, and she's a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when are you going to uh, get Lincolns instead of cataracts? Just ask how is Joe. I know, it, I know what you're talking about, Billy, Nick, because uh, my eye doctor says I got the beginnings of one, so yay! Yes, sir. How's Joey? Joey. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's, he's improving daily. And, uh, in fact, uh, my friend Dick Lefevre had uh, emailed me just the other day and said, it's looking very good that he'll be home for Christmas. Oh. And uh, the infections have gone away. The, the grafts are healing. Uh, he's still in an awful lot of pain, but they've been able to help him cope with it 
alternating different medications. Uh, he was on some pretty potent stuff and they decided they better back off otherwise he's going to get a resistance and they don't have anything more to give him that is more powerful uh, unless they want to induce a coma and they don't want to do that. Any others? Yes, Ken. Do you have any word on Jug Bowers? Uh, he's doing pretty well. Uh, he did uh, have some tests and uh, I don't think I'm talking out of school but there is a, a mass that is uh, it's, they don't think it's attached to the pancreas. They think it's just something that's sitting next to it. Uh, so, but they did a biopsy, haven't heard what it is, uh, but everything else was looking pretty good. And granted, you, know, you probably notice he's lost an awful lot of weight. And uh, there's uh, many factors that can contribute to that, and I'm not gonna go into those. Some of you who are in medical field or have been, you know some of the things that uh, he's going to be dealing with. So we, we definitely want to lift Jug up. And thank you for reminding me, Ken. Uh, he's feeling very confident. And the one doctor said uh, he doesn't think it's cancer. Uh, so that's, that's a hopeful thing. All right, is there another one? Yeah, oh, for yeah. my coworker who just told me that her husband has throat cancer. And then again, for my friend who just lost her little brother a couple weeks after his 40th birthday, and that was to brain cancer. Okay. What, what's, what, the, what are their names? Um, Tia, it was her brother Josh. And okay, then the, that's the throat cancer? Yes, and the other one's name is Justine. And she has... Her husband has throat cancer. Okay. Oh, man. It, it, and I asked are they a smoker? Okay, so what is his name? I don't know. Okay, that's a strange name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Justine's husband. And that's brain cancer. Um, throat, throat cancer. Throat. throat cancer. Okay, so Josh has... He just passed from brain cancer. Okay, I got them backwards. Okay, thank you. A family friend's husband, John, has brain cancer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Lydia? Just a minute. I'm coming. She's a coming. I, I just wanted to let you know that David came home from the hospital after about an eight-day stay. Um, he's doing better, but they couldn't do the gallbladder surgery, so he's still in a lot of pain. And so I was hoping we could continue to pray that nothing happens, that we can just get the gallbladder out in the next few days before okay. he goes septic again. Right. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Lydia. Thank you. Any others? Let, let's go to our Lord in prayer. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that your presence is with us always. We thank you that your presence is with us now through your Holy Spirit. We thank you that we can call upon you as children call upon their uh, good earthly father that is all for uh, his children. And we know that you are for your children. And Heavenly Father, uh, we ask that as we have lifted these folks before you, that you will indeed exercise your will to bring healing and restoration. We ask that uh, your presence will be sensed by these folks and knowing that uh, you are there to walk with them through whatever uh, challenge they are facing with some uh, dealing with uh, cancers, uh, people who have lost loved ones and uh, Lord, those who are struggling with uh, providing care for loved ones and Lord, uh, you know what is needful. And so we pray that you will place people into their paths or place them into the path of someone else that is able to give that encouragement uh, to help lift up their spirits and to uh, gladden their hearts, to give good wisdom and instruction for things that they face, things that uh, are different and will be challenges into the near future. 
We give you thanks for the ways in which you have been working in people's lives, especially as we praise you for those recovered from the COVID, uh, in particular Peyton and Sean. And uh, Lord, it's just an, an awesome thing that you're doing among your people to demonstrate the fact that uh, when uh, COVID is contracted, it's not a death sentence. It is uh, something that is a challenge to work through and to give praise and thanksgiving to you for the, uh, the miracles of uh, medications, drugs, uh, therapies, and the wisdom of doctors and nurses and others that help bring folks through these things. We are grateful to you, Lord, that uh, you are going to be watching over the folks that are uh, going to be having surgery soon for Billy and, and uh, later on Jug, uh, for, uh, for others that, uh, for David, that these surgeries will be successful and that uh, they will be back into the uh, course of things and uh, receiving your blessings as they continue their lives. And we ask that you will comfort uh, Justine, who's, uh, ha whose husband has throat cancer, Lord, touch his life and uh, let there be healing. Uh, we pray for uh, the family of Josh, uh, who has uh, died from brain uh, cancer. Grant that uh, they will receive your comfort that only you can give, the one that will lift them up and uh, remind them that you are very much close to them, as close as the air that they breathe. And Lord, we ask that you'll watch over John, who has brain cancer. Uh, and also for, uh, for David, who is uh, uh, needing that gallbladder surgery. Lord, bless them. Hold them up. Give them your grace. Grant them healing. Grant them restoration. And Heavenly Father, grant that they will turn to you in all things, trusting in your mercy. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You'll notice that um, you'll notice that on our uh, Advent wreath, this is the first Sunday in Advent, and uh, it's the first candle that represents hope. And uh, scripturally speaking, the prophecies point to the hope of Messiah coming. And we know that in Scripture, that prophecy was fulfilled in Jesus. And now, as we are living in these days. We are preparing for Jesus' return because he has promised that he's going to do that. We don't know when that time's going to come. But what we do know is that we can have our hope in God's sure and certain future that he will lead us with confidence in those days so that if Jesus comes now, we're ready. If he comes a little later, we're ready. In all things, we're ready and prepared. So that candle is lit, lighted uh, in order to uh, represent our hope which is in Christ Jesus. We'll join together. You can just uh, stay seated for this one. Uh, light one candle to watch for Messiah. And each Sunday we're going to be adding a verse. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us Let's rejoice, rejoice and, and be, be glad, glad in it. <clears throat> Set the 
Psalm 80, and we're going to be uh, reading together the first six verses. Together. Or is it the first seven? I think it's first seven. Together. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us an object of contention for our neighbors and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. <clears throat> we pray together. Stir, Stir up your, your power, power, O Lord, Lord and come. come. Protect, Protect us by your strength and, and save, save us from, from the threatening, threatening dangers of our sins. sins. For you, you live, live and reign with, with the, the Father and, and the Holy Spirit, Spirit one God, God now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Lord, we're asking for salvation and for peace around the world. Oh, the heaven come from heaven and the unity of loved by the Lord, let us draw near to him with a true heart, and admit our sins unto God our Father, sincerely asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who, who made, made heaven, heaven and earth. earth. In the Bible, 1 John chapter 1, it says, if we say we have done nothing to offend God, we're only fooling ourselves and not telling the truth. But if we admit our sins, God, who is faithful, right, and good, will forgive us our shortcomings and make us clean from all our wickedness. I will confess my sins unto the Lord, and I will trust that God will forgive my wickedness and unfair judging of others. Let us confess our sins together. Gracious God, I know that I am naturally sinful and unclean, and I know that I have offended you in thought, word, and deed, by what I have done and by what I have left undone. I have not loved you with my whole heart, and I have not loved my neighbor as myself. Therefore, I come to you for shelter in your limitless mercy, seeking and asking for your grace, that you will forgive me, renew me, and lead me as a result of the life, death, and rising from the dead of your Son, Jesus the Christ. 
Now hear the good news, for Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us. And he's given his only son, Jesus, to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To everyone who believes in Jesus, he gives the right to become a child of God. And he gives to them the gift of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Treasure chest moment. Come on up, y'all. Now don't open that until I get there. Oh. Oh boy. <laughs> Ryan's got that thing. Are you going to open it? Oh, you, I, you thought I'd never ask, right? <laughs> okay. Not, 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 oh, really? an apple. What do they say about an apple a day? No, it's an awful lot of apples. Is everybody awake out there? What's the deal? I said, that's a lot of apples. An apple a day. Boy, I'll tell you what, I'm bombing today. That's just, uh, that's just how it goes, isn't it, Christina? You know, that happens. <laughs> huh. Okay, well, let's see if we can get our act together here. <laughs> In today's gospel, uh, we hear that Jesus is telling his disciples another time to stay awake, to be ready, because he promises he's coming again. And one of the things that's important about that, and we can use this apple as an example, and that is, when, when we are just really ha hankering for a good apple, how many of you guys like a really good apple? Yeah. In fact, Cheryl and I, a lot of times before uh, we, we hit the sack, we'll have an apple. Slice it all up. Ooh, it's good. And what that does, it's, it's just enough sweets. It's just something that satisfies you, and you can get to sleep. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So, when we're hankering... You know what hankering means, right? When we're really wanting some, when we're really wanting some apple. You mean we, hankering for apples. Yeah, hankering for apples. Yeah, that's right. You know. uh, so when we really are looking forward to having one, uh, what do we do? We get it prepared. Now, if you're like what Cheryl and I do, you take a knife and you, and you core it out and then you slice it. So it's in preparation. It's getting it ready and looking forward to it. And then when it comes to us, Oh, it's really good. But what would happen if I would have asked Cheryl to fix me an apple, and she's so gracious she does that, and uh, instead of saying, go get it yourself and do it, you know, she's, she's really nice to me, unlike some people. I think that I was trying to look for an apple too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, I'm looking forward to it. But what would, what would happen if all of a sudden I just walked out of the house and, and forgot about it? Well, it would say that I'm not really prepared for that apple, am I? And in fact, while I'm outside, Cheryl just might say, well, he's not interested. I'm going to eat that apple. And she does. And I come back in the house, and I wonder where the apple is. And she says, well, I told you that I was going to have it here for you, but you went outside and you were not prepared. So I ate it. Now, Jesus tells us a really important thing today. And he tells it to us every day. And that is, he says, I'm coming soon, and we need to be prepared. Because when Jesus comes, it's going to be too late to get prepared. We need to be ready for him to come back. And it could be at any moment. It could be a second from now. It could be a year from now. It can be a long time from now. But Jesus says, you need to be ready so that when I do come, you're set to go. Now, that's something that we can do, can't, can't we? We can do that together. We can help each other get ready for Jesus. We can say, hey, you, get to, you need to get to know Jesus because he has promised that through him, you're going to be able to come to heaven and be with God. And that is so awesome. What a promise, huh? Don't you think so, Noah? That's a pretty cool thing. Hey, I haven't seen you for a little while. Can you sit up here with me a little bit? Oh, yeah. yes! Hot doggies. 
So I want you to remember, if you see an apple, you know, you, you need to remind yourself, I need to be ready. I need to be ready to eat that apple. Because if I'm not, I'm not going to get it. And it's going to be gone. What do you think about that? Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so guys. To be like, uh, um, ready for heaven? Yeah, we got to help people and ourselves, too. Be ready for heaven. And we do that, we read the Bible. Okay, guys, hang on. Uh, we, we read the Bible, and what else do we do besides reading the Bible? We pray, that's right. Are there other things we can do? We're doing it here. Confess our sins and go to church. That's right. Confess our sins and go to church. That's right. You want to get down for a minute? Okay. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> okay. Let's have a prayer, okay? What do we do when we pray? We bow our heads. We bow our heads? Fold our hands. Fold our hands and? Close our eyes. I think we already said that. No. Oh, uh, oh you're right. You're, you're right. Th sorry, Tyler. I, was, I wasn't tracking. You can't have that. <laughs> All right. And so why do we do that? Ryan, why do we do that? Why do we do all that stuff? To God. That's right. We, we, we show God respect. So let's pray. Thank you, God, for reminding us that you want us to be prepared because you love us. And when you send your son Jesus to be with us, we need to be ready. And so we can do that. And uh, we, we ask that you'll help us so that we who are children will have our parents helping us to remember that. And we have grandmas and grandpas to help remind us that you're coming. And we have other people who are here worshiping with us that can help us to remember and get prepared. So Lord, help us do this. Help us to do it for others. We ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Yeah, the yeehaw. All right, we have Miss Mary, Miss Debbie back there. And you want to take that? Okay, Elvin, find somebody. Find somebody. Somebody help him. <laughs> Who got it? Coy got it? I'm not even going to ask him to be nice to me. I know he won't. He's going to find something that's probably very Western. Boy, I'm bombing today. I'll tell you what, that's it. <laughs> Did everybody get sleep last night? No. I worked graveyard, no sleep. Oh, oh, well, it's it's awesome that you're here with us. Yeah. I know how I am when I haven't had any sleep. Cheryl would say the same thing. She knows how I am. All right. First lesson. Isaiah chapter 64, and we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 9. Now this goes along, folks, with the Advent uh, theme, okay? The theme of hope, of love, of joy, of peace. But it starts out kind of with a bang. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down! that the mountains might quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From of old no one has heard or perceived by the ear, no eye has seen a God beside you who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in, their, in your ways. Behold, you were angry, and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. 
We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. Your holy cities have become a wilderness. Zion is made, has become a wilderness. Jerusalem, a desolation. I've gone too far, but this is a message that we need to listen to. It is during this time when we ask God to rend the heavens, tear it apart, and come down. That's what Advent is getting you prepared for our Lord's coming. The second lesson is recorded in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, where he writes, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift, as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark chapter 13, where Jesus says, But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> Dear friends and family in Christ, may God's grace, mercy, and peace be to you from the one who is, who was, and who is to come, our Savior Jesus, who is Christ. Amen. Something about John Grisham you may not know. Yes, he was a lawyer continues to be a lawyer, sort of, and writes novels couched in a legal context. They are great fun to read, and several of you have read at least one of his books. I was looking through the internet to see what some famous people had to say about faith and came across John Gresham. In the several articles I read, I discovered that Gresham takes his faith seriously and that he tries to focus on the things that really count. Grisham says The Firm, one of his first uh, bestsellers, uh, was a bestseller for several reasons, not the least of which was the absence of bad language and gratuitous sex. Parents read the book, enjoyed it, then realized it could be recommended to teenage children 
and grandparents. The book was passed around, word uh, by mouth was good, and it became very popular. When I started, um, what Gr John Grisham says is, when I started writing, I made the simple decision to keep it clean. The decision was based on my Christian faith and a certain lifestyle I'm trying to maintain, and I've never been tempted or pushed to write otherwise. Gresham attributes that attitude to something that happened while he was still a law school student. A friend, a young man, called and invited Grisham to lunch. At lunch, he told Grisham that he had cancer. He didn't have long to live. Grisham was stunned. He asked, what do you do when you realize that you're about to die? His friend replied, it's real simple. You get things right with God and you spend as much time with those you love as you can. Then you settle up with everybody else. And then he added, you know, really, you ought to live every day like you have only a few more days to live. And Grisham never forgot his friend's word. Listen to them again. You know, really, you ought to live every day like you have only a few more days to live. I might add in there that maybe not days, but an hour. That's still pretty good advice. If you live every day like that, you will get the best out of each day. If you live another 50 years, each year will be better because you lived it well each day. And if a bus runs over you on the way home, you'll be ready. I'm not sure about buses around here, but could be some other crazy people. It's like my neighbor who was skateboarding alongside a Highway 20 and got hit by a car, came right over him like that. He survived. He gave him a little titch in the brain, but uh, he survived. It was something that he could think about. I'm only a, this much away from, from death. Jesus says, stay alert, for you do not know when the time will come. Someone has said that the worst ism in the world is not fascism or communism, but somnambulism. You know what that is? That's right. You tend to go to sleep. Somnambulism. That's a wonderful word. Try to wrap your tongue around. Somnambulism. So let me explain something. In this world, it's like ancient Rome. In the Roman army, a guard could be executed for falling asleep on guard duty. While that sounds very harsh, it reflects a harsh reality. Readiness is a matter of life and death. If a guard falls asleep, the enemy might breach the defenses and kill those whom the guard was charged to protect. Spiritual alertness is as important as physical security, if not more important, and I would say it is more important, because we live in a world full of soul-killing temptations and distractions. We are regularly subject to uh, advertising that trivializes life, to friends who demand that we do scurrilous things, to movies that glamorize violence, drugs, and sex, and to a thousand tempters, even coaches, who are at one time emphasize, who at one time emphasize spiritual values, often schedule practice sessions on Sunday mornings, and that means that it forces youngsters to choose between sports and faith. And in my last parish, that was happening. The football coach was, was a member of the congregation I served, started having practices on Sunday mornings. And I could not get the parents in the congregation to say no. And so the list of tempters is endless. When we succumb to them, we and our family and our friends suffer the consequences. It's somnambulism of the soul. And Jesus says, watch, keep alert. Get ready. 
Get ready for Jesus. You see, that's the message of Advent. The word Advent comes from the Latin Adventus, which means coming. In the four Sundays of Advent, we prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ at Christmas and for the coming of Christ at the end of time. It's easy to get enthused for the coming of Christ at Christmas because there are so many reminders. There's Christmas music, Christmas decorations, Christmas wish lists, and it goes on and on and on. Of course, it isn't really easy to get ready for Christmas. How do you find the right presents? How do you find time to trim the tree, to decorate the house, to cook a big Christmas dinner? Does it make you tired just to think about it? Yeah. Cheryl and I were talking about just yesterday. I said, <sighs> and you know, the older we get, <laughs> You all know what I'm talking about, don't you? It, all of a sudden, all the, the glitz and everything isn't that important anymore. Just the simple things. You know, you can have a decoration here or there as a, as a reminder, but hey, you know, what is the most important thing? Is to be prepared for welcoming our Savior for the second time, which will be the final time. So it's so easy to get caught up in the busyness of the season that we find ourselves having no time left for Jesus. Millions of people celebrate Christmas without Christ. We have to be careful lest we find ourselves among them. It's easy to get sucked into that mentality. But if getting ready for the coming of Christ at Christmas is difficult, it is even more difficult to get ready for the coming of Christ at the end of time. Christmas is a happy time, and we enjoy preparing for it for the most part. But how many of us are looking forward to the second coming of Christ? How many? Years ago, my pastor friend, Steve Humberg, was overheard by one of the congregational members as he was teaching confirmation class. He was sharing his faith with them, and he told them how important it was to be ready for Jesus' second coming, and even their own death if that occurred first. He told them their faith in Jesus was the most important thing to their being in heaven with Jesus. And he told them that if he was to die that night, he knew that he would be in heaven with Jesus. And he did. But he was ready. He was ready. He was prepared. Can you imagine? I discovered the impact that that had on those kids. Pastor was ready, pastor died. I know that there are folks in this congregation who are looking forward to the second coming. I pray it's all of us. I am too. It isn't what I usually hear though around. I hear people warning others to get ready lest they find themselves in trouble, eternal trouble at the end. I hear people wondering, worrying, whether they are ready for Christ's coming. But mostly I hear the sounds of silence. People try not to think about that subject at all. But like Cheryl and I, our friend Pastor Nate Hansen, many of you met him, and his wife Ruth, we say we hope that Jesus would come this very day, this next moment. When Nate and I are together, we talk about Jesus' coming as a time of celebration. We're kind of hankering for it. Why do we look forward to Jesus' coming? Well, it's because we're ready. We're ready. We are Christians. And I pray that you claim Christ Jesus, that you are a Christian. We believe that Jesus has come to save us, and he will come to save us at the last day. We try, as Christians, sometimes succeeded and sometimes failing, but always believing. We are ready. And you see, folks, that's what Jesus calls us to be. Ready! Jonathan Kahn said at the return event in Washington, D.C. this past September, we all are only one heartbeat away from meeting God. So Jesus says, and he says to all, 
Keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. So, as we are preparing, are you ready? Are you ready to welcome him with glad hearts, with open arms, with expectation, with joy? I pray that is so. Amen. If you please stand as you're able, we'll continue with our pulpit hymn. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' uh, Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through, Through him, him all things, things were made. made. For, for us and for our, our salvation, salvation he, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. man. For our sake, sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He, he suffered death and was buried. On, On the third day he rose again in accordance, in accordance with, with the scriptures. scriptures. He, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe, we believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He, he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We share the peace using I love you with a, with a little hug here. And once again, a reminder that the offering uh, plates are on a stand over here next to the, uh, yeah, whatever, you, the, the cry room, what, uh, yeah, nursery. And then there's another one over here by the sound booth. And if you haven't placed your offering uh, there yet, that's where it is. And what is the other thing that we want to keep in mind as we are giving of our tithes and gifts? We want to remind ourselves that we give of ourselves, our time, our, our person. So we'll join together now in the offertory. Let the vineyard, Lord, be
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker Make of all things. things. Through, Through your, your goodness, goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. gifts. With, with them we, we offer, offer ourselves to your service and, and dedicate our lives to the, to the care, care and redemption of all that you have made. made. For, for the, the sake of him who gave, gave himself for us, Jesus, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, Spirit ever one God, God, world without, without end. end. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I think I need bigger ears. <laughs> <laughs> 